Hi, I'm Barbara Hodson and once again on the 23rd of November 2019 I'm going back in time by talking to Maury Nelson about his involvement with the Nelson Rugby Football Club. This began when he moved to Nelson in 1960 at the age of 19 years and continued on until well after he retired from playing. Okay, Maury, welcome. Now first, I'd like to hear about your younger, somewhat challenging years. So let's begin with as to where you were actually born and who your parents were. Well, I was born in Tamaranui. Uh, my father was Gordon, mother was Dorothy. Uh, I had two um, siblings, yeah. uh, an older sister and a younger brother. brother. So what was your mum's maiden name? Can you remember? O'Neill. O'Neill, okay. Dorothy O'Neill. Dorothy Maud O'Neill. Okay. So Taramanui, mm. been there. Mm. Been through there in the train. So you were the what you were the youngest or you were middle the, one. you were the middle one. Okay. So do you mind telling us about how the course of your life altered dramatically at the very young age of four? Well, um, yes, my parents split up. Yeah. And um, my, my brother and sister went with my mother and my father took me and we spent uh, most of my younger years um, being palmed off to relatives or friends of dad's um, as he worked in the mills, um, timber mills, uh, he, he went uh, from place to place quite regularly yeah. and I just was dragged along yeah. after yeah. him. So, so how far away? So your mum went with your brother and sister. So, where where did they eventually settle? They they uh, went to when I when I discovered them again. Uh, they were living in Kumiu, so north of Auckland. Okay. Um, and she had uh, partnered up with a. Uh, fella and mm. changed her name to his okay. and uh, my brother and sister uh, also changed their names. Okay, so you never, you, I remember you saying that you, you actually didn't meet up with them again until you were about, what, 17? No, a bit, bit older than that. Even older uh, I, I was playing rugby for Nelson when, when we went for a trip to Palmerston North, yeah. New Plymouth, sorry, okay. New Plymouth, and uh, my father had just died, okay, yeah. and my sister saw the death notice in the paper, uh -huh. so when she saw it, she contacted uh, where my father was then yeah. living, yeah. and he, they contacted me, and we got into um, writing yeah. and they came down from Auckland to New Plymouth yeah. and we went up to play rugby and I met them in the hotel in New Plymouth. So did you recognise them at all? Not really, no. No, no. So no you, yeah. it, was, it was quite a, yes. Well, of course you wouldn't because your youngest brother yeah. would have been, yeah, he would have only been just a toddler when... If, when I think it's five... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, five or four or five, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, it's um, yeah, just amazing. So, so what? So you just sort of lived all around the place, did you? How? What? What was the longest that you actually spent in any any one place? Can you remember? Oh, I, I don't really remember. I I did spend uh, I did spend uh, two or three years with um, Dad's brother. Morris, yeah. he was Morris as well, right. uh, but I also stayed with my Auntie Vera, Dad's sister, yeah. and... Uh, so what places, so, so what schools did you actually go to then? Can you remember, you would have... <laughs> yes, yeah. I can remember heaps. I yeah. went to a school in Avondale, okay. I went to school in uh, Blockhouse Bay, uh, I went to Kaimai, Kaimai number, uh, Upper Kaimai School three times 
at yeah. different stages. Just at different times. Yeah, at like. different yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, Tauranga Primary, Grierton, which is a suburb of Tauranga. Oh, okay. Um, Taupo mm. High, District High School. That's where I finished my education. So how old were you when you actually finished college then? Fifteen. Fifteen. And it, and it was high school. And it's a high, oh, high school, school and then. Yeah. And it was changing the next year to Taupo Nui College. Okay. And they just built it. Right. So did you, when did you actually start playing rugby then? Can you remember what age you well, were? Well, it was at, at high school. I never played um, lower grades anywhere because okay. I, I was always busy uh, um, moving from place it's to place, place so yeah. I never got to know mm. too mm. many people. Mm. Uh, but at, uh, um, at college, at high school, I mean, uh, I, I got into, uh, there was only a few players, rugby players, and it was pretty easy to get in the yeah, team. Yeah. So, so were, you, were you kind of resentful about how you had such such a transient life, or you just it was just what it was. Well, it just it, it, at that time it was just what it was. It was yeah. I, I think I resented it later when mm -hmm. I knew what it, what, what had what, happened. Yeah. But um, yeah. I, I, I think I learnt a lot from it. Yeah. Um, I don't think it did me any harm. No. I've I've had a pretty good life since. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, mm -hmm. I don't think it made too much difference. Yeah. I, I, I think in, in, in those days you just literally, you just got on with it really, didn't you? You yes, just, yes. yeah, yeah. Hmm, interesting. So, when you left school, what line of work did you get into? Well, while I was still at school, I had three jobs, different places. I worked for a greengrocer who looked after me very well. Um, I, I left there and went to uh, the butcher um, and I worked in the garage. The garage was the middle job. Yeah. Uh, so this I, is when I, you were at, at, still school. at, still at school, yes. so, so after the, school jobs. The garage yeah. job was in, on a Saturday morning yeah. and, and after school I would go and I, 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 I was there only a, a few weeks. Yeah. until I put the hoist up and put a car through the roof. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was asked not to come back. <laughs> oh, so how did you manage to do that? How, oh, it, very it, thin roof, cardboard roof? The, the, <laughs> the, 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 um, the, the hoist was worked on a water pressure okay. and you turned, the tap, you turned the tap on and up it went. Okay. And I turned the tap on, then I went sweeping the floor, and then someone called me, and I walked away, and it just kept on oh, going up. Oh, kept on going up, okay. <laughs> so then you got it. Okay, so, so, that was, that, so that you were doing the job, those jobs when you were school. Still at school? When I, so when I left school, I, I, uh, my third job was the butcher, okay. and I, I got a permanent job with him. Yeah. Um, and then he took in a partner. And I worked with them for um, a year or two until they started having a bit of disagreements about things yes. and I, I got the blunt, brunt of it. Okay. So I left there mm. and uh, followed in my father's footsteps and went, w worked in a local mill okay. for yeah. about six weeks yeah. and I hated that. Did you? <laughs> so uh, a friend, a mate of mine, um, uh, that I'd played rugby with, um, he was do, he had done a uh, plumber's apprenticeship, okay. and he worked for a plumber, of course, and uh, so I got a job labouring for him, oh, okay. and I did that for a couple of years. Uh, I, I presume it was a couple of years. I can't remember, mm -hmm. but um, I worked we until he came out of his apprenticeship. And um, then that's when he said, "Well, I'm going for a tour to the down the South Island to, okay. to have a look around." Yeah. 
you want to come with me? Okay, so that's how it all kind of came about. So that's yes. So you, you weren't keen to sort of sign up for an apprenticeship to do the plumbing in those days, or no, were you not, offered? Not, an not really. I didn't. I, I didn't think I was educated well enough or anything yeah. to do those sort of things. I was yeah. a terrible scholar. No, they lived. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and and uh, the, the apprentice was Alan Crowler, yeah, okay. who, who came with, or we came together yeah. to, to, to Nelson, to Nelson. and okay. he played for Nelson as well. Yeah. So, I've, <coughs> did he, so he would have, just going back through photos, I didn't come across any photos with him in it. How do you spell... Crowther, so C R O T H E W. Anyway, C R O W T H Crowther. Okay. Yeah. So that was so you came on your big O E to the to the to the deep south. Yes. Um, where did you where did you end up living when you came down here? Well, we came across on the ferry. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, he he said to me on the, uh, when we were on the ferry. He said, um, "Now, don't worry about getting seasick." He said, uh, "You know, just we, we'll just go and have a couple of beers, and and, and you'll be all right." <laughs> well, I had the couple of beers, but he was the one that was crook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we caught the bus to Nelson yeah. off the ferry. Yeah. It, it it was a regular. It met the ferry and then um, bought passengers to Nelson okay. and uh, as it happened we were the only two passengers okay. so we got talking to the bus driver all the way home yeah. all the way over I mean yeah. and um, when we arrived in Nelson he said where are you boys staying we said well we don't know we've got to find somewhere to stay <laughs> so, you had to... He said, so he said uh, oh he said I'll book you into the Panama oh, okay. hotel yeah. and that's where I stay so we we went up there, and it was nine o'clock at night by the time we got there, and he he booked us in, gave us the key, <laughs> never saw the publican, <laughs> uh, and uh, we stayed there for oh four or five days, um, while we looked for jobs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And what did you end up? Where, where did you? Where oh, was your first well, job? Well. Um, Alan found the f first plumber that that he yep. uh, could see, yeah. and he uh, that was Bennett's. Okay. So he worked for Bennett's, and as we went to Bennett's or back from Bennett's, I called into J D and L Robertson's, the timber merchants, okay. and got a job there. Yeah, and I worked there for oh, I'm not sure how long. I, I, it seemed like a couple of years, and it might have been. No, I'm not sure. Yeah. But um, then, then I went to work for Bill Gibbons. Oh, okay, because you you ended up then you eventually ended up at the free, freezer. Freezer Works. Yeah. Yes, I worked for Bill for about eight years. Yeah. And then, uh, then I got a job at the freezing works, oh. and I worked there until I re retired. Nearly till I retired. Yeah. Nearly. Yeah. Okay. Um. So who was instrumental in getting you signed up to play for the Nelson Rugby well, Club? While we were looking for a job mm -hmm. and and board, um, and and we did uh, we we did get some board up okay. Rutherford Street up yeah Rutherford Street. Yeah. Uh, there was a lady had a boarding house there, and, and uh, so we yes. we got out we parked ourselves there. Uh, and while we were looking for that type of thing, jobs and board, mm -hmm. uh, we called into. Uh, a sports shop on the CML corner, and I'm not sure what the name of the sports shop was now, yeah. but um, I, I, uh, Mr. Don Cedarwell, um, okay. who was a Nelson Club member, as I as I understand, yeah. he uh, suggested that you know we'll go along to a Nelson Rugby Club mm -hmm. uh, training and uh, see if they want you or that. He told us where the training was at the yeah. Botanics, yeah. and that's how we joined up. Okay, so that would have been nineteen, so nineteen sixty one. That would have been here. no, that 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 was nineteen sixty. That was nineteen sixty. Okay. So yeah. so we we arrived at, at just after Christmas, yeah. 
and by the time we'd yeah. settled ourselves down, yeah. it was rugby season was starting. Oh, okay. That's how we got involved. So who was who was the lady that had the boarding house? You remember her name? Uh, Maury's looking towards his wife to get some <laughs> clues. <laughs> but weren't they something to do with the uh, pub, pub there? Something to do with the Panama? No, no. no there's a pub the in... Too, I think. No. Uh, no. So, so where about on Rutherford Street? It, it? It, uh, where, it, where Rutherford Street turned into Wymere Road? I, I can't, yeah, yeah, I know where just, you are. Yep. Just above just the, there. just above the, uh, that rise there. Yeah. Uh, above the rise, mm. um, just before Fieldfield Park, okay. almost on the corner. Oh, okay, A yeah, big two-storey place yep. on the left-hand side going up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that was it. That was it, yeah. Pretty handy to yeah. the Dominion. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Which is no, no longer there, is it? No. I think it's gone. Yeah. So was it straight into the senior team or did you have to prove yourself first? Well, I didn't want to play uh, lower grade rugby. I mm -hmm. thought that I was good enough for the senior team. Mm -hmm. So uh, I asked if I could stay in the squad yeah. and um, take my chances. Yeah. So the first year, all I did was train. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> On the second year, I was with the club. I got all the friendly games okay. and non-competition games. Right. So and, who, who, who was your coach then that first that year? Lick was the coach. Lick, okay, Lick, yeah. Lick Garge yeah. was the coach then. Yeah. And then uh, the third year I was, uh, by then a few had drifted off the mm. team and there was room for me mm. and I got a, I got a full-time mm. job then. Good on you for hanging in there. <laughs> yes. Actually. I mean that shows True loyalty. <laughs> well, I, they were the, the, the club was the, really the only friends I had. And yeah. I had a couple at work, but uh, mostly, mm. mostly. Yeah. Uh, the rugby club. Okay. Yeah. I notice in the centenary book you were playing seniors in that 1963 team, so that would be your first. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah first full year. It was coached by Luck, who then passed away suddenly. So, yeah, so that was your first year playing seniors. So that was one of my questions was, you know, was it your first year? So, Yeah, I have this photo here, and if we can get Brian to focus his camera on it and get a look at the team. So in, in your eyes, looking at it, who were the standout players on and off the field? Uh, uh, in this photo, um, there is uh, Gary Stewart and Alan Ashby, who were... Uh, the builders of our house. Um, Ivan Guy was, is my wife's He's your brother. brother. Yeah. Uh, Don Fowler was always prominent in my things with the club. Tony. Carl Tillin was the captain who was uh, very, um, what's the word, he led us and, and taught me a lot of things. Quite an, um, a mentor. Influential, yeah, that's yeah, the word. Yeah. Uh, Daryl Bowater, yeah. uh, Tommy Sharland, I worked with okay. for quite a few years. Yeah. Um, Maury Pugh, he was another one. Yeah. Noel Barton, of course, he was the coach and uh, he was quite influential. Yeah. And Alice and Alan Bryden yeah. were very uh, prominent in my early, especially in my early times yeah. with the club. Mm. So, so, so there's a very young looking, handsome Maury Nelson, <laughs> Ted Anderson, yes. and who I've interviewed, there's Scotty who's since passed away, Boy, yes. old Dinky Dynam, yes. yeah. yeah. so who's this guy here? That's um, oh, Re Reac. Murray Reac. Yeah. 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 Mm. Sorry, that. Uh, John Stevens was best man at our wedding. Oh, okay. And um, Frank Chapman just lives down the road here, not far away. Right. Rod Jonas is dead. Is he? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, he's. Uh, yeah. 
Still, uh, there's still a few alive there, though. Uh, that's, yes, um, oh yes. That probably... Potts, um, uh, Robert Potts. I've, I've seen him just recently. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, that was a good oh. year. Well, Murray, without doubt, probably rugby has played a major part in how you came to meet your future wife, Lynn, who is supporting Murray in the background. So my next question is about how did you meet Lynn and what is her connection to the Guy and Damon families? Well, we know that she was a Guy, but to the Damon families who are both well known in the Nelson Rugby Club family circles. Well, I met Lynn uh, at a club social. At, at the at the rugby club, club. at yeah. the rugby club rooms. Yeah. Um, she came with her sister Doreen, who is Mrs. Damon. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember too much about that, <laughs> that first that first um, encounter. Noel yeah. Barton tried very hard to get us to dance together. Yeah. Uh, with not much luck, <laughs> but things came better later. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so as as you just said, Doreen, who's uh, Lynn's sister, married um, as I know, Dilly Damon, yes. Noel Damon. Yeah, who was a you played? You would have played rugby with him. No, he oh, finished didn't? the year oh, that I started. Oh, okay. Yes. Because he was a very good first five, wasn't yes. he? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. He finished. He finished. I, I never played with Noel. Okay. No. So you were part of the winning championship team in 1967. Were you ever selected for the rep team at all? No, in a word. Okay. Uh, Did you ever uh, try out for the reps? Oh, well, no, hang on, you had to uh, be selected yeah, for... I, I, was, I was never selected. No. But uh, listening to... Uh, the radio report on Sunday morning. Um, Alan Patterson, the local rugby commentator, uh, picked his team, and I was in it. Oh well. <laughs> but he was the only one that picked me. Yeah. <laughs> I remember him. I remember mm. him. Um, what position did you play? I mean, you obviously were in the forwards. Yeah, I was um, a loose forward. Loose I forward. was yeah, skinny, rather. <laughs> That I, I was, I was quite fast. Yeah. Okay. And that yeah. was my. Uh, uh, that's why I was uh, as good as I was because yeah. I could get yeah. to the old first five eight pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. So, what year did you retire from playing rugby, and what roles did you take on after re retirement? Because I noticed that you were on the hundredth. Celebrations Committee, which we'll show a photo at the end. So what part of that were you mainly involved in? So I've got two questions here, sorry. <laughs> to yeah. start off with what roles you took on well, after you finished um, them. I started off being uh, assistant custodian to Bill Andrews. Okay. And then he wanted to hand the mantle on, mm. and I took his job, so I became custodian. Uh, one year I tr coached uh, an under 11 team, I think it was. It was either under 11 or under 13. Mm. Uh, I, what? Manager. I was manager of the senior team for a couple of years. Yeah. It was another job I did. I was all, on the committee pretty much all of that time. Yeah. And as far as the centenary went, uh, I can't remember having a, a, a specific job, yeah. but I just part of the team. I just part of the team that mm. and did what we needed doing. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a, <clears throat> it was a big event. Yes. Um, tell me about the two big trips away to Australia that you were involved in. So, did you go as managers on both? Both times, or were you just the uh, supporter? The, the the first the first tour in seventy one, I was the team manager. Yeah. 
and the second year, the second trip I mean, in uh, 1974, was I was the tour manager. Okay, so so you say 74. I just wondered because I think I rang Lorraine Neighbours the other night because I knew that that Bob and Lorraine and she she seemed to think it was about 79, 1979. Would that be, um, because I reckon it took place after my husband Hoddy finished rugby, but I, I could be, I could be wrong, because in 70... I, yeah. I don't think, um, yeah. I, but anyway, it happened, I discussed yeah. it uh, with Don Fowler, yeah. and he didn't go on that second tour, yeah. because he was, had just moved into the Hotel Motueka. Oh, okay. And yeah. that's why he didn't go on it, yeah. because he'd just moved in there. Yeah. So what was it like, um, that first, being manager of that first team, which was quite a major event, really, um, <laughs> first overseas trip, Trip. all these um, young... young uh, it, it was pretty good. We, we had three games. Yeah. We played uh, Newcastle. We played Canterbury Bankstown. And... Macquarie University, okay, yeah. and um, some of their customs were quite uh, unique mm -hmm. or uh, unusual to us, anyway. Yeah. So, was that your first first overseas trip? Yes. Yeah, would have been yes. for a lot of those guys actually yes. first time out of the country. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we raised a lot of money uh, through raffles and that at the Royal, yeah. uh, at the Panama, yeah. sorry, yeah. and. Um, Some of the older, uh, we had took some older um, supporters yeah. uh, who paid their way, um, mm. but it was it was a, a real good team effort. Yeah. Yeah. So the second trip away, it was involved uh, wives and girlfriends, so yes. it would have been um, a little bit different, but just it, as it certainly was a yeah. it was it was a lot different, and um, we did a lot of outside work to. To raise money for that mm. trip, we did house painting, yeah. we did um, concrete of paths and driveways, wow. yes. uh, we knocked down a big concrete chimney at uh, Nawatu. Oh, okay. Uh, that <laughs> one of the club members. Um, it's a bit of a. Got us the contract and, um, and the gear, oh, okay. and we just did the labour. Yep. It was really, yeah, but it was a real mm -hmm. team effort, mm -hmm. and, um, Beach team. oh yes, and uh, we went to, uh, we, we did a summer uh, looking after Tahuna Beach Camp at night. We had to, uh, what's the word? Um, patrol. 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 Yeah, patrol. yeah, yeah, Hoddy's talked about that, yeah. That, anyway, that's fine, carry on. That, yeah. that was really interesting, yeah. and, uh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, lots of things went on, and um, Hoddy would know about the uh, um, uh, what was it? A bottle of Uzu. Uzu. Oh, okay. <laughs> Might have to ask him about that. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so over the years with the club, what characters or occasions you will always remember? Oh, um, uh, the, there's so many. I mean, just the whole the whole club thing. Mm -hmm. the, the people that I looked up to were um, uh, Don Fowler, Maury Pugh, Carl Tillin, mm -hmm. um, Noel Barton, uh, Bill Marshall, mm -hmm. and Alice and Alan Brighton. Mm -hmm. They yeah. looked after me yeah. very well. Mm. I think because, you know, with my dad, you know, he had a fairly um, interesting beginning to his life as well. As you well, had that we, kind of that common, common ground. We did, we did yeah. discuss it yeah. from time to time. Mm. Mm. Yes, it was good. So when did you finally retire from all active involvement with the club? Can you remember what year you, you finished? No, I, I, I don't remember. It was... Um, I think it was about 1979, but I'm 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 not sure about mm. that. Mm. When uh, when 
Craig went to college and started playing for the first 15. Mm. I, I uh, spent my time with him, watching him, yeah. Yeah. and I also took up golf. Okay. Ivan, Lynn's brother, yeah. this, talked me into playing golf, mm. and then I just found that there was too much uh, to go yeah. to do everything. Yeah. Okay, Mori, so I have a photo here of you surrounded by past players of the club, and this was taken at the club's 125th. So, so if we could just sort of go through, I know there's three that have passed away, my, my dad, Alan Bryden, yes. Goody, yes. and Fred Coe, who was a real club yes, character. that's right, yeah. He was a great guy. But, you know, do you remember all these guys here? Well, that's Tommy Sharland, yeah. uh, um, Ted Anderson, uh, Russell Dixon, Gary Stewart, uh, Tony Walsh. Oh, Tony Walsh, of course, yes. Yeah. Now, I, I, I know Goody, yeah, yeah, I, know, yeah. I know the others, yeah. Now, that's John uh, Bowers. John Bowers, that's him? right, yes. Because yeah, he looks quite different there. And that's there. not Murray. No. No, not Murray, no, I can't remember. Jeff Moore. Oh, is that Jeff, right, Would yeah. that be Jeff Moore? Yeah, and I, I can't place him either. That's um, not Tojo, is it? No, it's Ray, Ray. Tojo's brother, Ray oh, Porson. Ray Porson, yeah. yes. And there's Fiery Fred. Yeah, Fred. Um, that's... No, I don't know who that is either. Bruce Gillespie. Right. Captain Clean, they used they called, they called him. him. Oh, do you remember no. him? No. <laughs> this one here, do you remember no. that one? I should do. I know, I, I recognise the face, but I can't remember the name. Graham Dyer. Oh, yes. Yeah. Is that him, I think? Yeah. Because uh, uh, he, he, uh, he did too. No, I think he's no. still very much alive. No, he's still, <laughs> I think no. He? The only ones that I know that have passed, passed away, away is the Fred, three. Yeah. Dead Fred and and Goody. And Goody, yeah. So while we're holding photos, we'll look at this photo as well. Yes. Which is that was taken in nineteen. It was the last senior team for nineteen sixty nine, yes. and the first senior team for nineteen seventy. So you actually, you and Daryl, were in the final senior team for 1969, and then you were in the 1970 senior team. You were as a manager, and I think Daryl was assistant coach, I think, down there. So do you remember that photo being taken? No. 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 Um, so it's quite no, a big squad, it's, it's actually. It's a big squad, yeah. Mm. I mean, I could it's, name uh, um, quite a few of those. Well, you, you, oh, I was a, this is 69. Yeah, 69 not, and 70, yeah, yeah. 70, of course, yes. Yeah, so that's yes, there. So yes, you, you yeah, had your last right. game in 69, because it yeah, says down the only, bottom here. Yes, all right. Um, that, no. Yeah, so you were players, you were players we're in the 69, 69 yeah, so 69 that, team. That, that, yeah. that seems to be about right. That's mm, about yeah. what I thought. 69. So there's yeah. Graham Dyer there. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so, uh, right. Mike Mahutu. Mike Mahutu, yeah. Hoddy. Yeah. Bill Reed. Yes. Ray Pawson. Graham Dyer. I'm not sure who that guy there. Tony um, Walsh. Tony Wall. That's Wall. Oh, oh that's right. Um, um, yeah, Tony. Uh, Ron Wall. No. No. Let's no. no. have a look at that. Uh, um, Don Wall. That's right, yeah. Tony Walsh. Then Ron Fabian. Ron Fabian, yeah. yeah. Gary Exeter. Yeah. Mike Monaghan. Yeah. Bart. Dinky. Yeah. Curly Gardner. Yes. Ted. Ted. Fred. Fred. Goody. Yes. Gary Orban. Yeah. Who's that guy uh, here? Uh, uh, Mackay? Yeah. Ron Mackay. Where, where are we? Back row. Calvin Cochran. Yes. He's brother-in-law to Graham Henry. Did you know that? No. Calvin Cochran's sister, Ray one. Yeah. Married Graham Henry. Henry. Oh. <laughs> I really. Okay. No. Johnny McDonald and, and I think the guy Payne. Yeah. And I don't know who that last guy is. But anyway, that's um, J. R. Robinson. Robinson. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You've been married to Lynn now for over. 
55 years. 55 years, well done. <laughs> Lynn, well done. <laughs> and you have a daughter, Raylene, and a son, Craig, and a well and truly a grandfather. So you were just sort of touching on the fact that your son, Craig, played rugby. Um, would you like to just sort of enlighten us? Craig that? played uh, through all the age group uh, for Nelson yeah. until college. Okay. And he um, repped for Nelson through all those years oh, as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then he went to college and he made the first 15 there and uh, played in the tournament team two years, I think, or three years. Two? Not sure. Mm. Uh, and then went to um, university, no, he went to teachers' training college. Yeah. and started playing for Varsity in, in Christchurch, but he got uh, concussed several mm -hmm. times and the doctor told him, stop playing rugby or you're going to kill yourself. Yeah. So that was mm -hmm. the end of his rugby yeah. then, which mm -hmm. was a pity because mm, mm. he was a good little player. So what position did he play? He, he played fullback pretty much all the time. Did he? Okay. Yeah. So what about your daughter Raylene? Did, was she sporting or...? Uh, not really. Just she had a go at hockey and uh, um, didn't really didn't really enjoy it, I don't mm. think. And no, so she... But she's, just, just a good supporter. She's a good supporter. She's She's got a uh, son who plays soccer. Okay. Uh, he's been playing soccer for a few years now mm. and I think he's got another year at college. Okay, so no grandchildren that are actually playing rugby at all? No, the other two, Craig's two boys, are both um, hockey players and they both represent the wire wrapper okay. in their age groups. Yeah, yeah. Mm. so they're pretty good and, and cricket as well. Okay. So they both play cricket and, yeah. and both represent uh, the wire wrapper in their right. age group in cricket. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty sporty. Yeah, that's great. Hockey is a very fast game to watch, isn't oh, it? I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's. Uh, yes. yeah. I had a crack at hockey many, many years ago, but. Uh, mm. uh, it's a bit different nowadays. Mm, yeah, because the old Astro Turf sort yeah. of fits pretty, yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so before I finish on a personal note, I just want to add to this that by recording these interviews for public viewing, it not only preserves the personal stories that make up the club's history, but also, Maury, acknowledges the time and effort made by these people during their time to ensure the continuity of the club for years to come. So, um, yeah. So finally, you and Lynn have been living here at the Eunice Rutherford Retirement Village, I think right from the word go, haven't you? How, how uh, many six years? Six months. We've been here 11 years. 11 years, okay. So it was sort of... it was had been rolling for about six months before you actually yes. came in. Yes. Yeah. Been a good decision? Absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't be better. Yeah. No, but I would have struggled out in the big wide world. Mm -hmm. And it's so much easier. Just so much support, I think. And I think it's just the security. Mm. Um, yeah. So how old were you when you actually moved in here then? 60... Seven? No, okay. 66? You had to be 65. I thought you did, you had yeah. To be, you had to be 65. Because they've changed it. Yeah, probably was, because yeah. I wanted... Mm. Yeah. Mm. Alright, well, many thanks for this, for participating and providing this visual history for the club's 150th celebrations, which are scheduled for next Queen's birthday weekend in 2020, so health permitting, do you think you'll be there? Do you think you'll come along? Oh, there, there's a chance. Oh, there's <laughs> a, the, the, the <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no. a chance, yeah, yeah I'm, right. I'm still in good health and yeah. yeah, I'd like to. Yeah, Yeah. great. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, and thank you, Lynn, and thank you, Brian, Brian. Brian cameraman. <laughs>